Hello there and welcome to another CodeZonk video. I have returned to the Code.org website because as we are recording, right now it is uh, October in the year of 2015, that's when this video is being produced, and we are really close to the month of the Hour of Code that's going to take place in December of this year. And what we want to do is just uh, take a look at a couple of examples on Code.org on how you as either a parent or a teacher can uh, get your kids to participate in the Hour of Code. I'm going to show you an example today that I think your students or your kids will find pretty fun because that's, uh, it's going to be one that includes Anna and Elsa from Frozen. Let's go ahead and take a look. And like I said, this is on the code.org website. And uh, what you'll do is you'll simply go to the Learn tab, which you'll find at the very top of the screen. It's one of the first things that you'll see on the website as of this recording. And I'm going to click on this Go button, and we'll get started. We'll look at a couple of examples, or samples rather. Now a video is going to pop up. I'm going to close that out, but I definitely encourage you when you're going through this with your students to have them look at these videos. What we'll do is we'll just go through a couple of sample exercises and let you see uh, what your students can expect when they go through these exercises. So it's going to, you know, understanding angles and, and what they mean is going to play a part in some of these exercises. We'll go ahead and close this out and we'll get started. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to put you in this sort of working screen here where you've got blocks that you can work with. And then over here on this side of the screen, this is actually your workspace. Over here, this is where the action takes place. This is what the code that your students are producing is going to control. And this button down here, Run, is always what you do to execute the programs or scripts that your students are producing. Let me close this out. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is say, we're, we're going to take some activity on this particular event. This block right here represents an event. It's called When Run. And what that means is when the Run button is pressed. Go ahead and conduct all of the activities that fall underneath this block. So let me grab this block. And all it is is just to move forward by 100 pixels. I'm going to snap that into place. And then when I press the Run button, you'll look over here at Elsa, who is going to move forward 100 pixels. And that's that. So the nice thing about this is, and we've looked at this before, but when you click on this Show Code button, it actually shows you what the code is that you're generating. And it tells you here that underneath the hood, the blocks that we're assembling together are actually producing JavaScript. So this program actually looks like this. It's a very simple, single expression. Let's continue. Now what we're going to do is see if we can create two lines that are at a 90 degree angle to each other. So we're going to use the turn block as well as the move block that we just used. Let's say OK and get started. So again, we're going to be attaching all of our blocks to the when run event. And the first thing that we're going to do when we take a look at Elsa, she's going to move forward. She does then need to turn and make a right angle and then move forward again. So I'll grab my move forward block, click it into place. I'll say let's go ahead and turn right by 90 degrees. And then we'll move forward once again. And this time I'll press run and let's watch the activity on the screen. Right, so that's perfect. This time we wrote three lines of code, and we'll take a look and we'll press the Show Code button, and that shows us what we've produced. So we've got the Move Forward expression here one time with a turn right, and then the Move Forward expression again. Let's continue. <clears throat> so they know in this exercise that we're halfway through making a square. Let's put four lines together to create a square. So they offer some help on angles again, if we need it. But in this particular case, we're just going to be making right angles, so 90 degree angles here. I'll hit, I'll hit OK, and I'll show you what we're going to produce. So they've already gotten started for us. They've put in a forward and turn right. That's going to get us here, and then facing in a direction to look downward this, the, this way. So what we'll do is we'll say, go ahead and move forward. And then we'll do another right turn by 90 degrees. And then we'll do another move forward, another right turn, and then we'll move forward. That should be a square. Let's go ahead and run it. And that does it. This time, when we go ahead and look at the Show Code tab, 
what you'll see is you'll see move forward and turn right. You'll see it repeatedly. And usually as you're going through some of these exercises and teaching kids how to code, you'll see stuff like this where the code begins to look very repetitive. And that's usually a hint or a suggestion that you're about to get into looping constructs, using loops to avoid having to write repetitive code like this. So let's go ahead and continue. All right, we're going we're gonna to close that out. And I encourage you when you're working through this on your own that you definitely go through these videos. This time we're working with Anna. She says we're going to make a square with the repeat block, which uses fewer blocks. So we're going to understand how many times that we need to repeat the block loop to, to, to make this square. So as we suspected, now that we've looked at repetitive lines of code, we know that they're going to start teaching students how to leverage loops so that they don't have to write the same lines of code repeatedly. So let me close out their hints here. And we'll take a look at what they're doing. We do have a new block. This time this is a repeat block. And basically what this is going to do is these two block statements as many times as specified in this option here. So basically what we're saying is repeat four times the activities of moving forward and then turning right by 90 degrees. So this time there's not a whole bunch for us to do. They've done a lot of the work for us. All we're really doing here is we're saying let's go ahead and repeat this four times. Let's go ahead and press the run. Okay, and we did it. This time we only wrote one line of code, but this is important, and I think this is one of the things that makes these programs so terrific. We want to press this Show Code button because even though we didn't do a whole lot of work on the front end using our blocks, when we look at the code, you'll see that you've got quite a bit of new syntax to look at. And what the students can actually get from this is that you can create a loop in code, and it looks a little something like this. And this looping code is actually very, very common syntax where you're initializing a variable that's going to be used to keep track of the number of times that you're counting. Uh, there's the threshold, uh, which, which is considered as far as when the loop needs to terminate, and then how you increment that counting variable. In this particular case, this plus plus syntax is shortcut for just go ahead and increment that number by one on each iteration. This time we've got move forward and turn right. They, they're written here in the code just one time each, but because they are wrapped in this block that describes the nature of the loop, it happens four times. Let's go ahead and continue. Okay, we're going to create three squares turning after each square. We're going to turn by 120 degrees before each new square. So we'll say OK to that. Let's go ahead and take a look because they've written quite a bit of code for us already. And all we really need to do here is just make sure that we have a clear understanding of the instructions and then the students can actually fill in the blanks from there. So what they've done is they've put a repeat block. We need to understand how many times we need to repeat that first time. Right below that repeat block is another repeat block. And you'll see it's having us repeat four times. That's the move forward and turn right. So your students should actually recognize that what this particular repeat block is doing is it's actually helping us to draw the square. Then right underneath, we have to turn right by an already predetermined number of degrees as specified in our instructions. Let's look at that. So down here, Anna is telling us, at the very end, be sure to turn by 120 degrees before each new square. We know that this repeat is producing the square. So let's go ahead and follow our instructions and say we'll turn right by 120 degrees. Now, let's create three squares, it says, turning after each square. So we know that we're going to create three squares. So we go to the very first repeat block and we put in three. Let's go ahead and run. And we did it. Now here's, I think, where you get quite a bit of benefit 
out of this program here on code.org and their code studio. We're going to click that show code button again, and this time you actually see nested loops. So you see, you see the syntax is the same, but based on the way that they're indenting, you can actually see that what they're doing is they're doing loops within loops. It's a sort of a complicated construct to look at for students who are very new to code, but it's something that you actually do encounter. So the fact that you can actually put this together with, with the blocks and get it to work successfully and then go back and look at the code that it actually generates is really good. So there's plenty of other exercises to do. I've taken you through five of them, but you actually have 20 on this one. It's a lot of fun. It's a really great way to learn how to code, and I encourage you to take a look at this either with your students or with your kids uh, when the Hour of Code comes up in December of this year. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see all of you in the next one.